visiting my local laundrette. Uh, I'd go there at the weekend uh, to, to wash my clothes and I'd realised I'd see the same people there every weekend but no one was talking or engaging with one another. Um, so I thought actually by putting a piano into that location it would act as a catalyst for conversation to get people talking. Play Me I'm Yours is the name of an art project that I've been touring around the world uh, for the last six years now uh, and involves installing uh, secondhand upright pianos uh, in streets um, right across the city for the public to play. So generally we put the pianos out on the street for two or three weeks and usually at the end of the street piano project we give our pianos away to communities. My friend, my friend says I should get down. He said to me, he said, I know you play, you used to play. He said, get yourself down pancreas. I thought, playing pancreas? He said, There's a, he says, yeah, some pianos down there. So I thought, God, I'll check it out. When I went in there and I saw the pianos, it's like, it's like I just walked into the, the Garden of Eden. I thought, wow. <laughs> I remember the day when I was when I was passing and I thought, that's a piano in the station, like live in the station, like it's really there. So I thought, let me just go have a look. Okay, ding ding. Oh it works, it works, lovely, lovely. I think I wonder if they'll mind if I just have a little tinker anyway. So I tinkered a bit more and then I thought, actually let me take a seat. <laughs> so I sat down and I'm like, doom doom, ding ding. Just like making up chords and um, before you knew it, I was singing like I was at a Delian concert. With healing hands, give your pains away, give you reasons to search for brighter days. And the will for wanting to just believe. Mm. I was quite shy and I felt a little bit lost because I didn't really know what I wanted to do at 13. I sort of wanted to do a bit of this and do a bit of that. I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do, had no idea and just music somehow fell onto me and it helped with my confidence a lot because I'm, I've been seen it a bit as weird. It's always been a bit of a wacky child but it was more in my own world, <laughs> like create a bubble around me and no one else. We're born to interact, to laugh, to, you know, build memories. And people tend to just do it in safe places. They don't do it with strangers. You could walk away and never, ever see that person again. But that memory of, oh my gosh, that was so sweet. To do that in public, in a public place with a bag of strangers, you know, that's a big deal. That is a massive deal. As a child, I was always singing and dancing, you know, anything that resembled a microphone I'd get a hold of, whether it be a brush, a, 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 a wooden spoon, it, it didn't matter, if, it, if even, even a prick stick, <laughs> you know, like, whatever you could use. Music filled my time. It, it made me feel I belonged somewhere. I grew up with all sorts of music in my life, like reggae music, all sorts of music, you know, my mum being Jamaican. But my mum used to play hymns. She, you know, she used to play hymns all the time. All godly, godly music, hymns, you know. So I've sort of picked up on that. Thank you. 
I think music is the great thing for, uh, you know, is that you don't need a language. You know, you can communicate without using these blunt instruments that we call words, which I'm using at the moment. But music sort of rises above all of that because you can communicate um, with sound. Right across a city, there are all these invisible communities of people, people waiting for the bus every day, waiting for the train every day, and they'd see the same people, uh, and they'd sort of recognise each other, but, but they wouldn't talk. The pianos are there for anyone to engage with, and they act as a, as a way of kind of connecting people. It's the one thing that has never ever let me down. I mean, you know, human beings let you down, girlfriends come and go, money goes up and down, career goes up and down, and health and everything. Music, it's always there. It always, always does the job. Everyone has bad days, and you need something to heal those bad days. If I feel down or whatever, I, I use it as, it's therapy. I don't see doctors. I go to the piano, yeah? I find all the medicine I need on the keys, yeah? That's how I, I heal myself. Well, the piano heals me, yeah? It's something different, isn't it? It's not new media. It's not, you know, an advert. It's not something digital. It's, it's something kind of made of wood and copper and strings and steel and it's it's something that is tangible and real and new and that's what we need when you're a teenager you're dismissed a lot and you're not seen as taking things seriously when i was younger and still now like the hardest thing is dealing with one of the most common things like depression and all of that because it it's sort of People don't understand and it links to when people say like, oh, just be happy, just smile. It's, they don't understand the definition of having depression. It's a chemical imbalance. The piano is of my release because I can sort of bash at the piano and go really hard and just put all of my emotion and it sort of makes me feel more relaxed because I'm not aiming it at a person. I'm using it in music and you put something angry and awful and you create something really nice and beautiful. Music, is, I know it sounds really weird to say, but uh, music is my life. Music is my heartbeat, and I would not be surprised if my heart was shaped as a treble clef. <laughs> The fabulous thing about putting a piano in a public place, and they're not used to being in public places, it has to be said, they tend to like being in quiet rooms, is that they bring people together. Somebody sits down and plays in there, and other people stop to listen. In a very anonymous public space, a very human social interaction begins, and it's gorgeous. And it becomes a talking point, it becomes a way that people engage with each other. That's when music is doing, doing the best that it possibly can.
I start traveling, playing street pianos around the world, traveling around Europe, and, and I went to America the first time in 2012. I went to Los Angeles, then I went to Boston and New York. Now I'm going to New York again to play 50 more pianos. So all together I play 770 public pianos around the world. I'm constantly inspired by the people I meet. And then they, they, they keep me, keep me like alive. What I remember about Michael is that he really has got a big heart. And then he helped so many people. He, 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 he really understands the meaning of sharing. This is why I love so much Michael. He's a very, very powerful man, very beautiful human being. My life is just, I've had ups and downs, and it's like, yeah, you know, you know, the homeless situations, there's times I've been, you know, and it's just like, and there's times when I have been, you know, and I haven't, you know what I mean? It's just, it's ups and downs. I'm, I'm, I move around a lot, that's it, you know? I, I, know, I don't make plans for tomorrow. Yeah, I'm just a day at a time, an hour at a time. Yeah, and it, it does. And sometimes I may sleep here or sleep there. It doesn't matter. It's not a problem. I would prefer it to be different, but it's, but it's just how it is. It's just it's. It's I'm existing. That's it. I exist from day to day. I eat, I sleep, I play piano. You know, there was a time before, you know, Tinder and Twitter and just apps for everything where there were more pianos than bathtubs in this country, which I think is an astonishing statistic. And certainly every pub had one and it was it was central to life, and I think we lost perhaps a bit of that creativity. The good pubs, and there was usually two or three in every sort of town around London, and my mum used to play, and Saturday night especially was great. It was a proper night out. Um, at eight o'clock, she'd call on Fred. OK, Fred, come on, it's your turn to sing, and he'd come up and he'd sing a a ballad or whatever, that only, they, they all know just one song which they all sang. No one would sing anybody else's song. That was an unwritten role, you know, that would be uh, devastating if that happened. And that would be the evening, but it would, it, that people lived for that. They lived for that that night, you know, it was uh, just a great night out. It's like a distant dream, really, for me, but I can remember being a teenager and there were still pubs where people would sing the songs on a Saturday night and you'd hear the piano coming out, often an out-of-tune piano, coming out of a pub, but it was a very inviting sort of sound. Piano definitely was a major part in my family. My mum was a great piano player. She brought us up playing the piano. My dad died. Uh, when I was four, he committed suicide, we never know why. It was the day before my fourth birthday, so there was a lot of sadness around. But when uh, relations would come round, like my Uncle Elf and Uncle Will, they'd come round and then go round the off licence and get a couple of quarts of brown ale. Mum would get on the piano and everybody would be smiling. And as young as I was, I'd see all these grown up people that were my relations instantly happy. It seems there is a whole world of, of family-based musical activity which is not really there anymore. Nowadays there's more activity done on th online, whereas previously entertainment would have been singing and playing, and that was a, a, a breeding ground for creativity and talent and musicians.
what I love is that it's something that doesn't have to be there. It's not essential for it to be there, for the train station to run, but it's there anyway. And why is it there? Because it improves the environment and everyone loves it and it's nice and it's fun. And it's about being human. It's about just enjoying things that, that um, are happening. I've always known from childhood the power of a piano just sitting there. It's like having an orchestra, a silent orchestra. You push a button and out comes a sound. You push another button, out comes another sound. I always knew the power as a child of being able to go and play what seems to be like a, an orchestral machine. The fact that you put it in the public just magnifies that by thousands because it's shared with everyone. It's a, it's, a, it's a great idea and great fun to reintroduce the piano as the, as the friendly uh, the friend in the corner of the living room or the friend on the corner of the street or the friend in the corner of the railway station. Piano companies are throwing out hundreds and hundreds of pianos every year. People just don't know what to do with them. It's always like burning books, isn't it? You just, you just shouldn't be burning books. The piano is amazing. It can do, it can do amazing, amazing things. You know, like what? Well, it was a time when I was playing the piano. This girl, she come up to the piano. She's in tears, crying, crying. You know. She sat down on the side. So I played, played several pieces of music. Uh, well, actually, I played one piece. I played a Bach piece, and she, she took it in and. In no time, she, the tears had gone. Just totally had gone. It just, it's an amazing thing what the piano can do. It can just, one minute woman comes to your piano in tears and next minute you play a piece of music and the tears are gone. It's amazing, right? Yeah, it's nice, nice feeling. Since they've been here, so I think the mood in the station has changed from when I've been here about nine years. And we didn't have that. I mean, on a Saturday night or Friday night, it could be a little bit dark and lonely here, but it's just a great sort of extra thing to the station that sort of you know, makes it a bit more happier place to be. The football songs I play in here, it just tingles. I love it, yeah? 49's undefeated, 49's in the league, I say Arsenal song, yeah? Remember, learn it, yeah?
Who said that? Who said Chelsea? You'll be playing, you know what, you see the fans coming, and you, sometimes you might just sense there might be a tear up happening, gonna, about to happen. Because you're looking over there and you see one set of fans coming, you think. One, you know, you don't know if they've lost the game or what, but you know what? You just, you play a song and it just, it just, it changes the whole atmosphere, you know? That aggression that they come in with, it, it, it melts away. You, you play a song, you play their song, and the, the whole of that aggression melts away. It's just like, it, it can, it's like a peace treaty. Jesus, man. I like that, t -t -t touch me. Who's gonna score first? This is what I'll play for the French boys. Lincoln City then, women. Lincoln City, okay? Brilliant team, yeah? Arsenal, these are your songs. Wednesday, this is the Wednesday. Hey kid, this is for you, yeah? Not for me, for you. Listen. Yeah, I like that, I like that. Real Arsenal, man. Arsenal winger, I hope you're watching. I like to play for the, the real people, like the people, the people you see standing there, the soldiers there, the real, the real governors, yeah? That's what I like, the real folks, the children. The kids, that's what I love playing for. Mum, push a kid closer. Hello, little kid. This is for you, yeah? I, I like playing for the little ones, yeah? Because they understand music better, yeah? So this is for you, kid. Yeah, clap your hands like that. Go like that. Yeah, yeah. Go like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes when I play the piano, I get tips, yeah? People leave all sorts of things, tips and that. And sometimes I say to myself, okay, I know there's, some, there's certain people out there who are worse off than me. So what I do is I try and help them and give them, I can't judge anybody. If I've got the tips and that, I'll give it, I'll give it out to them, you know what I mean? And I'd give out to those who, 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 def who definitely need it. And the ones I have given to, they definitely need it. Definitely need it. A lot of these people don't do this for a living. They just have this talent underneath. And it's just great to be able to encounter it because you normally never would. They're not going to be on the television. They're not going to be selling their records or whatever. So it's just fabulous to come through and have some spontaneous music in the day. How often do we have that opportunity to actually perform something, um, especially a musical instrument? But just to be able to experience that as an adult is something that's pretty remarkable. To sit down and say, I played in front of 20 people today on a street piano. I mean, that's a memory, you know, a little Kodak moment right there. When I finished the song, I just heard this roar of applause and I've turned around. There was like a good, maybe 30 people. And everyone's just like, oh, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Like, there's so many people looking at me. Oh my gosh. Some guys like, yeah, you should join the X Factor. Everyone was taking turns to, to share something with me. Then the guy who I heard his voice say about joining the X Factor, he's like double track back, coming, no, the voice. And then he's run off with his kid and I was just laughing because I was like, well, I don't really know nothing about any of them shows really. piano in itself, as I say, is a, is a sort of, um, is a dormant, sleeping um, a creature that then, with the right, played the right way, sort of springs into life.
everyone can identify with music, live music being played or song, you know, by people who aren't being paid to, to perform, they're just doing it to share their music and I don't think there's anything greater that you can share with, uh, with your fellow human than, uh, than your ability to sing and play the piano. It, it's magical. Everybody connects with it. They know the sound. A piano is a popular sound. Okay, you, there's other instruments, but the piano, it, it, it always has a, like a connection with people. It's always had a connection. And it strokes you. It strokes your heart and, if, you know, and it, it, it mellows you. And that's, and that's what people love, it mellows you. Well, funnily enough, like the last time we was filming at the Hearn Hill Piano, um, there was a lady who filmed me on her phone. It was actually Jessie Ware, who's a famous British singer-songwriter. The media went crazy. The voice actually found me through, you know, noticing my uniform because they didn't know who I was or my face and neither did she. And then eventually they actually got contact with me and invited me to come on their show just from sitting at the Hernhill piano. And stars above that shine so bright The mystery of the fading light For me the soul of music is is when people just make music because they want to make music and the public pianos is the place to do that because everyone does it just for fun and just because they want to play and it's an equal playing field it doesn't matter about money or anything it's just because people want to play and that's the soul of music it's just playing because you want to make music and for no other reason the headhunters of the voice went to the extreme like to tracking me down everybody just all of a sudden in like 48 hours was like jamie 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 guess what guess what they did not stop ringing me they did not they were like you have to come on at least have a try and they were so cool um i went to the voice i, I actually attended the audition and i i I, I, will, I went under the assumption that I'm not going to get through anyway, so let me just do it and quash it, that's done. They liked it, called me back. So I went back thinking the second time round, this will be the end and that will be the end of that, I can get back. They liked it, they called me back, so I was like, oh my gosh. And they gave me such star treatment, I didn't have to queue up with everybody else. They were so cool and attentive to my needs and being so, well, obviously, because it's business, they need to, for their benefit, they were they were keeping me happy. Um, but it got to about the fourth audition and I wasn't so successful, but I didn't mind. I was actually quite relieved because the reality of the possible reality of, of being famous or 
gaining stardom overnight was actually quite overwhelming. I find I'm not really suited for the televised productions because they're very, you know, pigeonholed. They need you to be in the bag and I'm very much outside of that. So we may have clashed if I was to stay and they would have booted me off anyway. <laughs> I don't play the piano myself. My daughter was the only one who had any use out of it. Now she's gone to university. So when the opportunity came to donate it to a public space, I couldn't have been happier. I've worked as a professional piano tuner all my life and um, it's, it's really a vocation rather than a job. The fact that I can do it as a job is fantastic. All the wonderful times I've had as a child sitting down with this wonderful instrument there, there are the ordinary people of this country and are not going to experience that. Okay, the middle classes, the musicians, the people that can afford it. People don't have the room. I've seen enough evidence on the street now to know how valuable these pianos are to ordinary people. I think music can be a great influence for change and for good, and I think by having pianos in um, places where people can get their hands on them could also be that. The old time uh, the community thing of, uh, of sitting around a piano in your front room or in the pub can be recreated in the uh, railway stations. What a lovely world it'd be, every street corner, you know, there's a piano. Um, it's just what the world needs, really. Coming to this piano once a week on the Sunday for the market really boosted my confidence because I was playing in this piano in front of all these people and even though you can't see them you still know that they are there um, and it's boosted my confidence not just in like a musical way but also in a social way in the way I am with people but I think it's the reason that I have a job because of my general confidence people can feel that now rather than it just like, me looking really awkward. In insults really did affect me and it made me cry quite easily. Where now I feel like if someone does call me weird, I do take it as a compliment and I accept, yeah, yeah I'm a little bit weird and you know what everyone is, so it's not that big of a deal. At 13, 14, I couldn't have imagined ever even performing in front of such a large amount of people just playing to my family was frightening enough.
Thank you very much. Have a lovely rest of your day. I'm not really fussed anymore about whether I'll make it in the, in the limelight as such because as a musician, in, in my heart, it's a spiritual kind of, you know, I was born with the love of music. So it doesn't matter if I make it or not. I, I in myself will always be a songwriter, a singer, a dancer, a performer, an artist. No one can take that away from me. And the piano just, it, it thrives. It helps me to thrive. Definitely. I've learnt a lot. It's made me learn a lot. It's made me learn a lot about what life, what life, could be what my life could be because I don't think I've, I've I haven't really I, I, I haven't I still have I'm still searching for things so it's it's it, it's 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 just made me aware of what life could be yeah so I've still I've got a long way to go yeah so I just as I take it a day at a time this is my you know That's my aim, man. Yeah. <laughs> so it kind of keeps your spirit alive. Yeah. Keeps you inspired. Yeah. Keeps me alive. That's the right term, I would say. Keeps me alive. Thank you.